Number 5. Time Hipster? This one's an absolute classic in the Time Traveler's Caught on Footage community, of which there are dozens of members. This strange photograph that's made the rounds of a man who looks like he stepped out of time. The photo was taken in 1941 at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Canada. But when the photograph was included in a digital gallery in 2010, the internet instantly took to the guy in the crowd who looks like he just walked out of a crypto startup or had just come back from axe throwing and hitting the barcade. This guy is dressed in surprisingly hip clothes, looks like he's wearing contemporary shades, and kind of looks like he's holding a DSLR camera. You'd think a time traveler would be bringing back something a little bit more extravagant, but you know, maybe it was all he could afford. He could have spent all that money on those sweet shades and that cool shirt. Did he come back in time just to get some snaps of a bridge reopening? It seems like you could probably shoot your shot a lot higher if you were messing with the space-time continuum and all that. Nonetheless, the image of the well-dressed hipster in the crowd has sparked a lot of debate since he definitely doesn't dress like he's from the 30s. Those shades are cooler than anything I've seen seen in that time period. Underneath what looks to be a contemporary hooded sweatshirt as well, he's wearing a Montreal Maroons jersey, a hockey team that played from 1924 to 1938. So either he's just very hip for the time, or he planned to disguise ahead of time to blend in with the locals. My theory? This guy knows all the best vintage stores are getting cleared out, and he's time traveling going back to score vintage shirts from the appropriate time period. That Maroons jersey would definitely be a flex in 2022. Number 4. The Chronovisor one of the most secretive places in the world is undoubtedly the Vatican's archives. It's been said that it's one of the most secure buildings on the planet, so if you're planning an Ocean's Eleven kind of deal, think again. We can only speculate what sort of things they have locked away in there, but it has been said that they have technologies we could not believe in there. Like, you know, the Chronovisor. According to French priest and paranormal investigator Francois Brun, the Chronovisor was a device that allowed members of the Vatican to see into the past. Brun claims that the Chronovisor was first built in the 50s by a scientist and priest, Father Pellegrino Maria Ernetti, along with a council of scientists working in secret around the clock. Brun's description of the seemingly magic device was that it was a large cabinet made of unknown metals connected with a series of levers and buttons. Apparently, it could be programmed to see any date in the past. From Brun's account, Ernetti used it to see all sorts of wondrous things, from a speech given by Napoleon Bonaparte, watching the crucifixion, and recovering fragments of a lost ancient tragedy play called Theistes to transcribe to the modern day. Now, Obviously, there's going to be some skepticism as to whether or not the chronovisor exists or ever existed at all. I mean, it's a pretty bold claim. A photo that Ernetti claimed was a real-life photo of the crucifixion later turned out to be nothing more than just an edited wood carving. Unfortunately, we may never know the truth behind the chronovisor since the doors to the Vatican's vault are locked very, very, very tightly. Number 3. Gateway Experience the CIA was fascinated with harnessing psychic ability. This is very well documented, with several projects being released to the public about this sort of thing. To simplify it as much as I possibly can, the project was centered around using a combination of hypnosis and finely tuned audio to create an altered state of consciousness. The thinking was that through binaural beats, the output of the left and right hemispheres of the brain would sync up and uh, make you more psychic good, uh, I guess. The summation from one of the researchers is that a human brain operating normally is kind of like a lamp. But when both hemispheres are in sync, this light turns into a laser, reaching farther and more effective than before. The goal was to expand the human consciousness and have it reach outside the body, being able to astrally project yourself back in time. Test subjects would meditate in a mantra saying, I am just a physical body, and I deeply desire to expand my consciousness. While listening to this hypnotic audio, putting their body into a sleep state, the subjects were told to visualize time as a wheel with spokes that point to events in their past, and just find a way to transport their consciousness back to those moments. In the early tests, less than 5% of the subjects were able to achieve this, but the team believed that with years of practice they'd be able to harness this ability better. The final stage of the learning and experience was an out-of-body movement, where the subject would be able to lift their consciousness out of the body entirely and harmoniously interact with the environment. However, unfortunately, no one in the project was able to reach this stage just yet. Number 2. In 2019, Reddit user Flard posted a story captioned, Time travel is not what you think it's like. In the post, the user named Clark details the experience he had in college at Georgia State University when he was approached by someone scouting for a clinical trial dubbed Project BTAOW33. A little disappointing that it doesn't have a super cool name like Project Majestic or Project ZK47 or something, but okay. Going along, the researchers promised to pay for Clark's tuition in exchange for participating in a clinical trial. Clark met with the researchers and was taken to a small nondescript house in the Georgian mountain woods, wherein laid a silver metal house 
with a ring surrounding it, which the crew insisted the test subjects avoid coming into any contact with. Clark continues and says that there were only two other people participating in the trial with him, two other students of a similar age, a young man and a young woman. The three of them were ushered into the home and introduced to the experiment. The doctors told them they would be launching three hours into the future. The entire house would be transported and in three hours they would reapparate. The doctors reassured them that it would be completely safe as they practiced on rats and dogs, although they didn't know what it would feel like. After a brief explanation, the doctors drove off to their control site to begin the experiment. And here's where it gets weird. Clark claims that outside became dark instantly. And not just dark, like black, like the abyss, like an unmoving void. In the post, he describes it as like being between dreams. He claims from here that the three test subjects began to panic, shaking around the room, desperately trying to see something outside or escape this house that they've been locked in. Clark claims that he has no idea how long he was stuck inside that building, saying it could have been anywhere from minutes to hours to even days. One of the subjects attempted to escape and he said he was lost to the void entirely. So what happened? Well, Clark claims that after an extended period of stasis in this void, they did appear three hours later in time, just like they had claimed. And then after being returned home, he'd never heard from the researchers or the project again. Number one, the Philadelphia experiment was a US military experiment performed sometime around October 1943. The USS Eldridge was the center of these top secret black ops level tests. Officially, the project was to prototype advanced cloaking technology, with the intention being able to render an entire warship invisible. Think like what the Predator does, but for a battleship. Well, that would already be unnerving enough. Legend has it that the story runs deeper than that, and that the cloaking, ironically, was a cover for the true reason behind the trial, which was experimenting with time travel. Witnesses of the experiment claim that they saw the USS Eldridge disappear into a cloud of green smoke surrounding the ship, where it then vanished before reappearing after a few seconds. Seconds. Reports from the crew are horrifying to say the least, where they claim that they were affected in various disturbing ways. Crew complaining of intense headaches, nausea, some claiming they suffered mental issues after the trial. Others developed mysterious illness. Scariest of all though is the claims that some crew members had fused to the ship itself, skin and limbs fused to the bulkhead. One crew member in particular, Al Bielek, claims to have first hand experience with the Eldritch where he insists the experiment was a success and when the Eldritch vanished it reappeared in the year 2137. Bielek Klan made a litany of claims about his visions of the future, claiming he saw a utopian vision of the future where the world was run on an AI that had eliminated all of the world's problems and conflicts. Officially, the US government has outright denied everything, everything regarding the Philadelphia experiment and has ignored all of Bielek's claims altogether. But of course they would, okay? They're not gonna throw their hands up, lay their cards on the table and be like, oh yeah, we've got time travel. We've been traveling time since the 40s. We've been experimenting with it ever since. You caught us. No. No, they're gonna keep it under wraps until they're ready, and they'll probably reveal it about 40 years ago. Number five, Victor Goddard. Royal Air Force Commander Victor Goddard was a flying ace who served with the RAF in the First and Second World Wars, who seemed to be a vessel for paranormal activity. In 1935, during action in the Second World War, Sir Goddard was sent to investigate the condition of an abandoned Scottish airfield in the unnotable village of Drem, east of Edinburgh. When Goddard flew over the field, he reported it as they'd expected, that it was as they described, a desolate, abandoned airfield where the cows were grazing on grass that had forced itself through. As he circled the airfield, however, he found himself caught in a storm cloud that had been passing overhead and had to fight to regain control. When exiting the cloud, Goddard found himself frozen in fear looking down and reporting that the airfield had been completely repaired. The airbase had been restored, now fueling and stocking four biplanes in its hangar. The abandoned field was now crewed by a staff of mechanics, all dressed in blue coveralls, unlike the RAF at the time, which would have worn brown uniforms. The planes on the field too had been painted a bright yellow, contrasting with the usual drab silver of the RAF at the time. The storm cloud passed through again, and Goddard reported it vanished yet again. Had he passed through a temporal loop? Was there something more in that storm? Most concerningly and most interestingly, in 1939, the airfield at Drem was restored completely to working order. And shockingly, the RAF mechanic uniforms were updated to be blue coveralls and the planes started to be painted yellow, as if for a moment Goddard had seen years into the future. The incident haunted Goddard, and he wrote about his experiences in his book, Flight Towards Reality, where he tried to make some sense of his brief flight through time. Number four, iPhone 1920. Now, if you're pretty active in that aforementioned time travelers caught on footage community, I'm sure you've seen this one as well, but I'm sure we've got some new viewers too, so let's take a look at it. An excerpt from the 1928 film, The Circuit 
Circus, starring Charlie Chaplin, an old silent movie about a penniless clown joining the circus. Probably the biggest laugh riot of the late 20s. It would already be a notable piece of American film history, but among those who hunt the truth, it might contain proof of a time traveler. A woman can be seen walking through in the background, wearing unnotable attire for the time period, but holding something up to her ear, which she appears to be talking into? What? <laughs> As she walks by, it looks eerily like she's talking into a mobile phone of some sort. One has to wonder if she's getting good reception. I doubt Verizon had as many satellites in the 20s. Still, it's hard to deny that it definitely looks like she's talking into a cell phone. Now, some skeptics have offered some possibilities for what it could be, as skeptics are wont to do, with the most popular theory being that it's just a hearing aid of some kind, and the poor woman is just trying to hear better. Another slightly more cute suggestion is that the woman is just a bit camera shy, and is trying to cover her face as she walks by. Or, also a possibility, she could just be an old woman talking to herself and she's having a moment. I've gotta say, if she is a time traveler though, she is doing a very sloppy job letting herself get recorded and analyzed like this. Or maybe that's exactly what she wanted. We may never know, but since she's such a popular time traveler, you'd think by now someone would have tried to travel back in time to this incident just to get the facts and finally put a close to the case, right? If no one else will, I will. Number three, time traveling car. This next video, footage from a dash cam in Russia from a patrol vehicle up uploaded to YouTube has garnered millions of views and lots and lots of puzzled viewers. Take a look. We can see a fairly ordinary scene, a blocked up intersection and jam packed rush hour traffic. As the car in front of our car starts to drive forward, it turns to the left and we see another car appear out of completely nowhere, like it just materialized out of the ether. Now, the most logical, sound and scientific explanation is obviously that this car is a ghost, but let's try and take this seriously for a bit here and use our brains and think rationally. It is possible that this is a back to the future situation and this car is traveling through time and just happens to be materialized and careening through this intersection. I mean, when you watch this clip, it really does seem like this car comes out of nowhere. You don't see it at all until you do. Now, unfortunately, a strong bit of evidence against the time travel theory is that we don't see any blazing tire treads on the road, which is a universally recognized sign of proof that a time traveling car has been through here. Still, until we get a scientist of some kind to take a look at this clip and explain to me indisputably what is happening, I am resigned to say that this is absolutely time travel. Number two, Pandora's MacBook. Take a look at this ancient Greek statue. It depicts a young girl offering something of note to what looks to be a noblewoman accepting the gift. Taking a look at the gift though, it looks suspiciously like it's a little girl trying to show an older woman something on her laptop. I mean, look at it. It's even got charging ports in the side. And it doesn't look like there's a USB slot though, so we have to assume it is uh, history's first MacBook. Typical. Now, skeptics argue that it could be a depiction of a very hollow chest or a thin chest, but if this little girl is supposed to be offering the noblewoman a gift, I would say what good gift is going to come in a package that small. At best, it's a gift card, which is absolutely terrible. Says you weren't thinking about it at all. It seems a lot more likely to me that someone traveled back to ancient Greece and maybe left their laptop somewhere or offered it to the people as a gift of technological prowess from the future. Imagine traveling to an ancient civilization and showing them a MacBook. You would be heralded as their god. And if you showed them Fortnite, oh, they would be writing myths about you for eons. What if over the years, all the things that have been described as being godly mythical powers were really just time traveling pranksters going back to mess with the time stream a little bit. I'm very, very confident that if humanity ever does attain the ability to travel through time, teenagers will mostly use it to pull pranks and create irreversible damage to the timeline. In fact, I am almost certain that has already happened, given how odd the last couple years have been for us. Number one, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves may very well be the greatest actor of all time. A big statement, I know, but it is a hill I will protect with my life. Name a bad Keanu Reeves performance. You can't. From Neo to John Wick to Johnny Silverhand, all the way to Theodore Logan III, Keanu Reeves always delivers. And it makes sense because he's been acting for a very long time. Maybe a very, very, very long time. There are an alarming amount of paintings and photos throughout history of people who appear to be the stunning image of Keanu Reeves. Now, the most likely answer, of course, is that Keanu Reeves has been traveling through time several times to research and prepare for whatever role he needs. Here he is as King Charlemagne, who was buried hurriedly in cold weather, perhaps as a way to cover up that the actor had to leave the role and there was nothing to bury. Here he is as Paul Monet, a French actor who appeared in multiple silent films, who would later go on to be a professor. When Monet passed, his body was never found, probably because he had to travel back to our timeline to be on The Tonight Show. 
Worth noting is that when directly confronted about his possible immortality or latent time traveling ability by Jimmy Fallon, Keanu did not outright deny it, instead only offering the quote, we're all stardust baby, which is absolutely something a man who has seen the depths of the cosmos would say. In a 2014 interview, when questioned about giving away the sum of his Matrix earnings to the stunt crew, he responded, money is the last thing I think about. I could live on what I have already made for the next few centuries. And maybe he already has. Number 5. With the James Webb Telescope, NASA has found a way to be able to peer back into time literally and look deeper into the cosmos than ever before. The speed of light is 300,000 kilometers a second, meaning that it takes about 8 minutes for light from the sun to hit earth. Meaning the rays of the sun are not real time, but rather already 8 minutes old when you see it. So using that same thinking, most stars are light years and light years away. And for those at home, a light year is 9.46 trillion kilometers. So really, you know, hop, skip and a jump away. The James the James Webb Telescope is able to see so deeply into space that it's able to see light emitted from stars 13.5 billion years ago after the dawn of the Big Bang. So in a sense, we can travel through time and are able to see light from the advent of the universe. It's not quite the TARDIS hurtling through the galaxy, but it is an unimaginable achievement and one that will be surpassed sooner than we think. If you're liking what we're doing here at Top 5 Scary, why not toss a little subscribe our way? And I promise the rest of the ones on this list will be time travel. I just wanted to slip one little educational thing in there for you. Number 4. Mike Markham In 1995, Mike Markham was a 21 year old student majoring in electricity with a knack for homemade gadgets. His goal? To create a time machine out of scraps in his home in Missouri. The device which he had dubbed Jacob's Ladder, referring to the biblical ladder to the heaven, and less likely the fantastic 90s horror film, was constructed using the laser from a compact disc player and a continuous arc between two poles. And you know what, if I'm being honest, I'm more of a Morty than I am a Rick. I got no idea how he built this and I got no idea what it does, but he says it would help him travel through time. Markham claimed that his device produced such energy that when he threw a piece of sheet metal into it, it disappeared and reappeared seconds later. Hoping to see what he could do with some real power, Markham stole six transformers from a power grid nearby. His next experiment caused a blackout in the neighborhood and his theft alerted the local police. Markham spent the next few months in jail, but upon his release was stunned to discover that he'd become a bit of a local hero. After an interview on a radio station, calls were pouring in from people who wanted to donate money, supplies, and their own ideas on how to help Markham with his time travel device. For the next two years, Markham would work tirelessly on his machine, having rebuilt the plans to be the size of a man. 1997 would be the last update from Mike Markham, who vanished from the public eye and the world at large, with his whereabouts being unknown since then. After missing a call from his parole officer, police tried to track Markham down, going to the warehouse he used as a workshop finding nothing but burned up machines, damaged electronics, and no sign of life at all. Did Markham's machine work? Well, we may never know unless he decides to come back or forward. Number 3. Anne Moberly and Elle Jourdain In 1901, two friends and collegiates, Anne Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain, were both teachers at St. Hugh's College in Oxford who were traveling through France on a vacation. Their primary destination was the Palace of Versailles, the former center of political power in France until the revolution. What was supposed to be a walk through the annals of history became far more literal than either of the women would expect. Taking a promenade through the Petit Trianon, the two claimed to have found themselves walking through the 17th century surrounded by people in period attire, going about their day as if nothing was out of the ordinary. Jourdain claimed that it was as if they'd seen they were walking through a painting, that it felt as if they were in a living tableau. As they walked through, confused and disoriented, they came forward to a woman sketching in the park who they assumed to be another tourist who they later claimed was Marie Antoinette, the last queen of France. Shortly after, the pair found themselves back in the palace as if nothing had happened. They had returned and visited Petit Trianon several times, hoping to reignite whatever had occurred. When they returned to Oxford, they produced two separate personal accounts of what had occurred, desperate for answers. In 1911, the two produced a book called An Adventure, under pen names for fear their academic status would be threatened. The two never found answers for what happened to them and were often ridiculed for their belief, their claims being dismissed as a shared delusion, a folie a deux, or nothing more than a tall tale for attention, which seems unlikely from two esteemed teachers. So what really happened then? Did Anne Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain share a hallucination on a trip together? Or did they accidentally walk through time? and find themselves in another world, if even for a moment. Number 2. Breaking a story 10 years before it happens In 1932, a pair of newspaper reporters, J. Bernard Hutton and photojournalist Joaquin Brandt, 
had been assigned to cover a story on the shipyard in Hamburg, Germany. Not the most exciting gig, but hey, sometimes that's being a newspaper reporter. The men drove out to the yard, questioned the workers, spoke to the executives, and had finished everything they were sent out to do by about the middle of the afternoon. Presumably bored out of their minds having to document all the excitement of a 1930s shipyard, the men were rattled to hear the screech of aircraft flying up ahead, and found themselves surrounded by warplanes circling around. The workers were fleeing, and the two journalists tried to flee the scene as quickly as possible, making sure to take several photos to take back to the newspaper as proof of an attack finding it a much more compelling story than what they'd originally been asked to cover. The security personnel insisted the men had to evacuate as soon as possible. The men fled, saving themselves by a hair. But as they escaped the facility, they found something far more disconcerting. The skies of Hamburg were clear. There was no black smoke, no damage, no warplanes, no panic. The men didn't understand. It was as if the battle lasted for seconds. When Brandt developed his photographs, shockingly, it depicted the shipyard as they'd seen it that morning, completely intact. The editor dismissed all of their claims as a farce, assuming his reporters had just stopped to try some local drinks and came up with a wild story. The two never spoke of the incident again. Until in 1943, a story came out about a Royal Air Force raid on a Hamburg shipyard. It was exactly as the men had described to the detail, 11 years after they had seen it. Number one, the Philadelphia Experiment. If there is any one body on the planet that I am easily convinced has a leg up on time travel, it is the US government. In 1943, the US Navy were attempting to experiment with cloaking technology to be able to render something invisible, with their ultimate goal being a full warship. The USS Eldridge was the subject of these experiments. The experiment was to create a high voltage magnetic field around the ship in order to cloak it or, or something. Again, I'm a host for a YouTube channel. I am the farthest thing from a scientist. The story goes here that the ship vanished surrounded by a cloud of green smoke. The crew of the Eldridge complained of severe nausea, several of them complaining of mental breakdowns, extreme mood swings, and disorders after the experiment. Some claim <laughs> to have even been rematerialized, fused into the bulkheads. Of course, everything about the Philadelphia experiment is as classified as classified can get, documents full of blacked out redacted chunks, so we only have the reports of individual crew members to go off of. One service member from the ship, Al Bielek, claims that the invisibility cloak was all a front, and the true experiment was to travel through time, claiming that for moments, the ship had traveled a hundred years into the future, but what felt like for only 10 seconds. Now, some of Yalek's claims get a bit out there, difficult to follow, but bear with us, because they're interesting to listen to. Bielek claimed that the world of the future was a unified utopia of floating cities and clouds, in a world without governments being ran by a hyper-intelligent AI called the Synthetic Intelligence Computer System. War and all its conflicts had become a thing of the past. Bielek went on to claim that he was involved in the Montauk project as well, a conspiracy theory that alleges, as part of the MK Ultra experiments the US Army was attempting to research, psychological warfare and time travel. Now, obviously, the US government did not acknowledge or give the time of day to any of Bielek's claims, but I mean, why would they? They're not going to come out and say, yeah, you got us. <laughs> Hands up, we've been experimenting with time travel and this guy is blowing the entire thing for us. Or would they just stand by? Say nothing, smile, and just insist that we're all just tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists. 